Thank you so much. Did you hear me? Thank you so much. I'm overwhelmed, and if I don't get anything else right today, I just want to say uh, how grateful I am and how overwhelmed I am at your outpouring of love and attendance. I wish Judy could be here, but she was with us most of the ride, and she's watching today. You've been a great team. Each team has. I can see that you still are. I see that you are building great families and you're building teams out in the real world where it really counts and that you are people that still believe in this great nation of America that we all live under, the freedoms that we have and the freedoms that we will have to fight for in the future to keep. So I'm just overwhelmed with the day. I hope all of you enjoy it. I uh, hope we have a good time. And I hope that we uh, show the youngsters of this town what a tradition you made and what a tradition that they can make to carry this great tradition on. We need it to keep going. And I can't go with them forever. I, now this isn't a retirement party, as long as far as I know. Maybe I don't know something, but I mean, I'm not aware of it being a retirement party. And I have no plans for retirement, but God always has plans. And uh, so uh, I want us to enjoy this day, and I want to share a few things with you that you all share with each other. I'm going to ask Miss Brenda Miller to work her way up here. Uh, and I'm going to start out with a, a poem. It's called Mindy's Poem. Mindy Leahy was a member of three consecutive state championships. Each championship, the girls set a new scoring record in the state and uh, cultivating in a perfect 15 in 2004. And that was one day that I was smart enough to keep my mouth shut. I didn't try to coach a bit. They had to lead all the way. And I just kept saying no. <laughs> but uh, she wrote a poem that I think is, should be our anthem. I think uh, it describes being a scissor runner as well as I know it. I want to add another thing. There's more cross country people here than any other sport, but the scissor legacy in track is very strong too, and there are track athletes in here. And through the years, our track athletes and our cross-country athletes have become uh, close, and I think closer each year. And uh, there's a lot of harmony there. And in 1997, uh, as with Coach Womack as the head coach, uh, we won a state championship in track. And we won several second places and thirds and fourths. We have a great track legacy too. And so uh, let's applaud all the track athletes that's in here. Now I'm going to read Mindy's poem, and we start this out a lot of times nowadays, uh, back in the locker room, and uh, uh, I, I hope it continues a long time, and I want Miss uh, Miller and her family to have a copy, and I want one to keep uh, at, at the high school as a memorial to the cross country team, and Mindy in particular. It goes like this, every morning we rise to a new day and prepare ourselves in our own special way. We come together to meet and run, what some call crazy, we call fun. All this we do, we do as a team. All this we do, we do for the dream. This bond we share is what keeps us strong, no matter what route we run, short or long. The push-ups that leave our arms so sore, the dips and the leg lifts, and we come back for more. All this we do, we do as a team. All this we do, we do for the dream. The track workouts that we sometimes dread and all the little moments that we long for our bed. His pump up speeches and the boom of Coach Hatley's voice, drinking bottles and bottles of water when soda would be my choice. <laughs> all this we do, we do as a team. All this we do, we do for the dream. The roads we take, the races we run, the battles we shake, the work and the fun, the laughs and the tears and the moments of glory, the moments of fear and the moments of worry. 
We've cried for the win, we've cried for the loss. We've traveled the distance no matter the cost. When all of it's said, over and done, we'll know in our hearts that we truly fought as one. I think that describes the Zizzard cross country team. I think I don't I don't see any objection. Anybody object to that as being our home? <laughs> well, Debbie, we'd like to present this to you and your family in memory of Mindy and of the cross country team. Thank you all very much. It's what, a, what an honor it is. This man has meant the world to our family. What was taught through the coaches and the leader that he is, Mindy was taught perseverance and dedication to along the journey that she was led. And I know without a doubt that that was instrumental in her fight. So I thank you. Mindy handed me that poem uh, right before we boarded the bus to go to the state championship those girls senior year and uh, prophetic nobody knew that what lay ahead for her, as none of us do but uh, boy she handled it with class she, she won with grace and she fought her battle of life with grace and dignity and, and courage as did Judy and many others uh, there's others that we've lost on the way and, and I have no problem people mentioning them uh, one, one gentleman that supported us tremendously just passed away recently Jack Hunter I can't tell you how much money Jack Hunter shoveled into my pocket through the years to take the kids he, he would go troubleshoot on his old job as an iron worker on uh, metal buildings and he'd take his uh, meal money travel money and he'd eat at McDonald's instead of the big steakhouses, and he'd always have some money for some kid's shoes. Travel miles and miles, and uh, never wanted anything in return, just to be around the kids. And he worried about them, worried more than I did. I needed somebody to worry, because I don't like to worry. And uh, he, he did it, and he, he loved the kids. There's been many others. If I try to mention too many names, I'll, I'll lose them all, but I'm grateful to all of you that have put in extra time and effort to help the kids uh, in the Bible the people the elders uh, rebuked the kids for coming and wanting to be around Jesus and Jesus got on to he said the kingdoms made up of these kind of people unless you come like a child get away with your selfish stuff you're not going to be there either and uh, so any of you that's given up your time and effort and money to help children, uh, heartfelt thank you uh, for what you've done. And everybody here, there's not an unimportant person here. There's all Americans, there's some high school all Americans, there's some collegiate all Americans, six time all Americans at Division One. And there's guys that ran that sixth and seventh and eighth spot and just hammered away and vibrated apart trying to keep up. And they still were the backbone of those championship teams. I can remember Casey Collins getting in that talented guy's face and saying, you think you got it tough? <laughs> <laughs> it takes a whole team. It takes a whole team to win. One weak member can bring the whole house down, but it takes everybody to make it win. And uh, there's a lot of them sitting in this room. I'm proud of them. I want to introduce some. Uh, hold on to it just a minute, but I, I want to talk a little bit about the very beginnings of this. Because uh, through the years I've watched and people have given me more credit than is due for uh, what's happened with Zizra Cross Country. But uh, I, had a, I had a guy that, I had a couple of guys, really, three or four, 
that helped me start it, the, the real dream. And uh, one of them was a coach that I coached with for a lot of years. His name was Bill Sharp. Bill Sharp and I started together up at Richard's school. And so we had half of the first team trained before we got up here in 78. <laughs> Donnie Long had the other half over at Fairview. And we put together a pretty good team. But Bill uh, was the first guy to buy into, I, I had to convince Richard's school that they needed cross country first and then the other rural schools. So that all began in 1968. And, and one of my top salesmen for that was a man named Bill Sharp. And he started living that dream. He didn't know what it was about. All he'd ever done was ride bulls. And, uh, <laughs> but he, he, he bought into it. And so we pushed it, and he had a bunch of runners in. When he came into the West Plains a year ahead of me, and he kept saying, you need to come next year. You need to come in. And apparently, as the story goes, uh, they talked to him and uh, about maybe him taking on more responsibility. And he said, I won't do it unless you bring Joe Bill Dixon in. And uh, uh, Harold Smith said, well, that's into working. He's coming. And so Bill Sharp was the first girls coach, cross country coach. And I heard that Sharon Judd was going to be here. I know that's one of his members. Is she here? Maybe didn't make it. Oh, he, he, was, he, he helped me with the very first uh, bunch. Uh, Paula, would you and, and uh, Melanie, Melanie Bond and Paula Sharp, Paula's his wife, would you guys stand up and let us recognize you? Thank you. We, we appreciate, I, I just want you all to know how much I appreciated Bill's part of this, and I want everybody else to know that. Uh, a great man. Um, I'm going to take you all through the locker room just a little bit, I already have, and, uh, but I'm not going to talk long because uh, we're all uh, touching each other and hugging and I, I even uh, hugged Pretty Boy Cross, that's a real stretch. We had a couple of Pretty Boys on my team, most every boy had a nickname. And, uh, so uh, that was a stretch. But first one, uh, I will say this about these things. They're never too old. They never get out of date. This first one's just as true today as it was 100 years ago. It's called attitude. The longer I live, the more I realize the impact of attitude on life. Attitude to me is more important than facts. It is more important than the past, than education, than money than circumstances, than failures, than successes, than what other people think or say or do. It is more important than appearance, giftedness, or skill. It will make or break a company, a church, or a home. The remarkable thing is we have a choice every day regarding the attitude we will embrace for that day. We cannot change our past. We cannot change the fact that people will act in a certain way. We cannot change the inevitable. The only thing we can do is play the one string we have, and that is our attitude. I am convinced that life is 10% what happens to me and 90% how I react to it. And so it is with you. We are in charge of our attitude. Here's another one you've probably heard. It's called teamwork. Together, everyone achieves more. Do these three things. Do right, do your best, and treat others like you want to be treated. Two sets of three, don't lie, don't cheat, don't steal. Those are very simple life principles. The other's a little bit harder, it's about attitude. Don't whine, don't complain, and don't make excuses. If you get a whole team of people like that, you've got some people that's pretty single in purpose and pretty hard to beat. The most valuable thing in the world. I am the most desirable thing in life. Without me, no one can be healthy, happy, or useful. Without me, the hidden wealth and vast resources of this earth would have no value. Men and women who try to get along with me are characterless, selfish, undeveloped, useless, and unprofitable members of society. I am behind every fortune, every art and science, every achievement, and every triumph of man. Rich men and poor men alike often try to find substitutes for me 
hoping thereby to secure a larger measure of happiness, peace, and satisfaction. But they are always bitterly disappointed. Instead of gain, every substitute for me brings them loss. As the Creator is greater than the creature, so I am greater than wealth, power, fame, learning, or any other acquired possession or quality of man, because I am the source from which he acquired them. Anybody, how many know the answer? You're willing to risk it. Now, not just the current team. Somebody said it back there. Who? Somebody way back Who said it? Brave enough to call it again? Brave enough to call it out again? Work. work. That's right. That's work. Simple work. I could go on and on. There's a goose story how they honk for each other. They work together. And that's a lot of the things that we learn in cross country. I hope that you people, when you leave here and you're talking to kids, I heard the other day, uh, it's not just the other day, it's a while back, that a prominent board member on one of our, and our, uh, the rural schools have been the backbone of our, our cross country program. But I heard that one of the board members, I think this is sad, he said, nobody cares about cross country and track. Look at, look at the people in here, what they've done. How many of them got an education? And they tell me it's not important. Don't let them tell you it's not important. Tell your board members. You, you want coaches that coach everything. You want coaches that give your kid a chance in everything. Uh, hey, I'm all for basketball. I loved it. I had a pretty decent basketball record when I coached. But there's no better sport than cross country and track. So you guys gave me a little party here. Well, I'm taking advantage of still plugging the sport I love. <laughs> you go back out and fight for it in our, our area. Again, it doesn't need to die because some people just don't care to teach kids and show them that it's a great sport. It can be fun. And, uh, and you couldn't have your kid, even in another school. I don't care if I find out your kids for running for another school, I'll go up and hug them and, and cheer for them as they go by. But it's a great sport. Don't let it die. And uh, let's keep it going. I want to mention another man. Uh, God, he's ugly. <laughs> Dennis, Dennis Kreider. <laughs> is <laughs> Dennis knows too much on me for me to be too hard on him and I know I don't too much on him so we have to talk but uh, Dennis was a large part of first of all fueling my soul with this sport called running and road racing and then secondly he took what most people just say is a another job, a quill reporter, and took a camera and made it a high profile job. And he, with that camera and his pen, made cross country in the little town of West Plains be the flagship of cross country for the state of Missouri, in essence, with his pen and camera and his ability. <laughs> playing field now because you've got you've got the internet but in those days we had the quill and everybody else had the small corner on the fifth page of the sports page in some big city paper everybody knew who the zipper runners were we were the most famous in the state and uh, that's due a lot to Dennis Kreider and then if there was a road race in town those years Dennis Kreider was the one behind it Dennis Kreider and Joe Bill Dixon and uh, I appreciate him like a brother. Thank you, Dennis. This is your track and cross country. Don't get me wrong, but I'm smart enough to know when there's someone there that can do it as good or better than me and, uh, and let her do it. She, she really, day in and day out, most of the time, runs the day-to-day -day operations of what we do. 
our co-coach in track is, is Greg Dixon, my son. And it's, it's a lot of fun. He made the statement uh, here a while back that someone asked him what it's like to coach with his dad. And he said, well, he said, uh, when I was growing up, I uh, loved him, but I didn't really like him. <laughs> but he said, uh, now that I coach with him, I found out he's kind of a fun guy, too. <laughs> But uh, it, it, it's a lot of pride. Our, our, uh, our cross country and track teams are family oriented. And they, uh, we, we try to teach family values and, and, and concepts. Um, I'm going to close. Well, Coach, should I recognize some or not? I, I don't think, you know, we talk, talked about this a lot, but. It's on record who's won all the accolades and things, and we try to do it here. But we're going to leave someone out and hurt someone's feelings. You're all winners, as I said when we started out. Together, we did achieve more. Some years, we fell just short. Here, here's my favorite stat. Boys team, 37 chances, 37 trips to stay. Uh, 33 of those we brought a trophy home. Girls is slightly less, but it's, we, it, it's about the same ratio. I think we have a good solid program that's consistent, and we give ourselves a chance to win every year, and when somebody drops the ball, well, we take advantage of it and get it. And uh, I, I, it took teamwork on the teams themselves, out of the kids themselves, and out of the feeder programs like the rural schools and the West Plains Middle School. And uh, if we keep working that away, and, and when you guys uh, hear talk about sports around West Plains, let it known that you think there's some value in cross country. You hear board members and administrators talking. Uh, it's just human nature to uh, grease the axle that squeaks the loudest. And sometimes in some of these other sports, people just squeak a lot louder. And uh, we need to let them know that we love this sport too, and it's good for our kids. So I'm going to read uh, this final uh, poem to you, and uh, then let's just fellowship and have a good time together. By the way, this is a little uh, booklet that I, I revise a little bit every, every three or four or five years. And I use it at my running camps, and I use it with my teams, but we've got them up there. They're free, uh, but if you want to leave a donation for the, the running program, well, we, we would like to have one for one, if you want to take one home with you. This is called Heaven's Grocery Store, and I mean this sincerely to every one of you. This is from me to you, and more importantly, from Jesus Christ to you. It's called Heaven's Grocery Store. I was walking down life's highway a long time ago. One time I saw a sign that said, Heaven's Grocery Store. As I got a little closer, the door came open wide. And when I came to myself, I was standing inside. I saw a host of angels. They were standing everywhere. One handed me a basket and said, My child, stock with care. If there was something you couldn't carry, you could come back the next day for more. First, I got some patience. Love was in the same row. Further down was understanding. You need that everywhere you go. I got a box or two of wisdom, a bag or two of faith. I just couldn't miss the Holy Ghost, for it was all over the place. I stopped to get some strength and courage to help me run this race. By then, my basket was getting full, but I remembered I needed some grace. So I started to get enough so I tried to get enough to save both you and me. So then I started up to the counter to pay my grocery bill. For I thought I had everything to do my master's will. As I went up the aisle, I saw prayer and just had to put that in. For I knew when I stepped outside, I would run right into sin. Peace and joy were plentiful. They were on the last shelf. Song and praise were hanging near, so I just helped myself. Then I said to the angel, Now, how much do I owe? He just smiled and said, just take them wherever you go. Again, I smiled at him and said, no, how much do I really owe? He smiled and said, my child, 
Jesus paid your bill a long time ago, and he did mine and yours too. Thank you all very much.